Interpretation of Stool Examination Stool routine examination includes gross examination, microscopic examination and chemical examination when indicated. Gross examination of stool includes consistency, color, quantity, odor and presence of mucus or blood. Consistency of stool is described as loosely formed stools, watery stools as seen in diarrheal stools, dry or hard stools as seen in constipation, pasty stools due to high fat contents and seen in common bile duct obstruction or celiac disease, ribbon like stools suggest the spastic bowel, rectal narrowing stricture or partial obstruction. Color, normal color of the stool is due to presence of stercobilinogen or yellow green color is seen in diarrhea. Black and tarry stools may be seen due to bleeding from upper gastrointestinal tract. Reddish color is seen in case of lower GI tract tumors, hemorrhoids, fissure or inflammatory process. Clay colored stools are due to biliary obstruction. Pale colored stools with greasy appearance are due to pancreatic deficiency leading to malabsorption. Quantity of stool. Normal quantity is approximately 100 to 200 grams per day. Disorders with poor food breakdown and absorption as in steatoria lead to large, bulky, frothy and foul smelling stools. Odor. Stool odor is caused by indole and scatol which are formed by the bacterial fermentation and putrefaction. Foul odor is caused by the undigested protein and excessive intake of carbohydrate. A sickly odor is produced by undigested lactose and fatty acids. Presence of mucus and blood. Mucus is produced by the mucosa of colon in response to parasympathetic stimulation. Mucus is translucent gelatinous material clinging to the surface of stool. Mucus alone may be seen in severe constipation or mucus colitis. Mucus along with blood is seen in many conditions like bacillary dysentery, ulcerative colitis, intestinal tuberculosis, amoebiasis, enteritis, etc. Mucus with blood which is clinging to stool may be seen in malignancies of colon, an inflammatory lesion of rectal canal. Microscopic examination is done to look for the presence of leukocytes, red blood cells, macrophages, fat, ova, cysts and other microorganisms. Presence of leukocytes. Normal stool may contain occasional white blood cell. To look for white blood cells, the smear must be prepared from the area of mucus or from the watery stool. Increased number of white blood cells in stool is associated with bacillary dysentery, chronic ulcerative colitis, shigellosis, salmonella infection, E. coli diarrhea, fistula of anus or rectum, localized abscess and sometimes with amoebiasis and typhoid. Viral and parasitic infections don't cause white blood cells in the stool. Presence of red blood cells in the stool. Blood in stool can be bright red from bleeding in the lower gastrointestinal tract or black and tarry from bleeding from the upper gastrointestinal tract or occult which is not visible to naked eye. Causes of blood in stool can be hemorrhoids, GI tract malignancies and dysentery. Presence of macrophages and epithelial cells. Presence of epithelial cells is indicative of inflammation of the bowels. Presence of macrophages is indicative of bacillary dysentery or ulcerative colitis. Fat. The fat in stool shows the possibility of malabsorption deficiency of pancreatic digestive enzymes 
or deficiency of bile. Meat fibers and muscle fibers seen in stool. Their presence showed defect in digestion and increased amount of meat fibers can be found in malabsorption syndrome and pancreatic functional defect like cystic fibrosis. Microscopic examination for ova and parasites. Normally, there are no parasites or eggs in the stool sample. Multiple stool samples should be examined to rule out parasitic infestation. Usually samples on at least three consecutive days are examined. The commonly found ova, cysts and trophozoites are Enter amoeba histolytica, trophozoite. It measures 12 to 60 microns in size. It is asymmetric, shows motility and has a single spherical nucleus, a single central karyosome and delicate and evenly distributed chromatin. Cyst is spherical, measures 10 to 20 micron. It is a mature cyst with four nuclei with a compact centrally rotated karyosome. The chromatin is delicate. Some cysts may have chromatoid bars. This is the infective stage of the parasite. Giardia lamblia. Trophozoid measures 10 to 12 micron. It is pear shaped with tapering ends. It is actively motile like a falling leaf and has two centrally placed nuclei and uniform granular cytoplasm. Cyst of Giardia lamblia is oval to ellipsoid in shape, measuring 8 to 19 microns. Mature cysts have four nuclei, while immature cysts have two. Nuclei and fibrils are visible in both iodine stained and wet mounds. Ascaris lombricoids, roundworm. Fertile egg of roundworm measures 60 into 45 microns. It is round or ovoid with a thick shell. It is covered by a thick albuminous coat. Its inner cell is in various stages of cleavage and it is brown in color. Decorticated eggs. The albuminous coat is lost. Infertile egg measures 90 into 40 microns. It is elongated. Its shell is often thin and its internal material is a mass of globules. Triturus tritura or whip worm. Egg of whip worm is elongate and barrel shaped with polar hyaline plugs. It measures 22 to 54 microns and its shell is yellow to brownish and plugs are colorless. Ankylostoma duodenal or hookworm. Egg of hookworm is oval and ellipsoid and measures 60 into 40 microns. Their shells are thin walled, smooth and colorless. Their internal cleavages are well developed at the 4 to 8 cell stage. Tinea species that is Tinea saginata or tinea solium. The tapeworm egg is spherical, measures 31 to 43 micron with a thick shell with prominent radial striations and embryonated oncosphere which possesses three pairs of hooklet within the shell is diagnostic of the genus. H. nana. Eggs of H. nana are oval, measure 30 to 50 microns. On the inner membrane are two poles from which four to eight polar filaments spread out between the two membranes. The oncosphere has six hooks. Entrobius vermicularis. It is a plano-convex elongate and asymmetric egg which measures 55 into 26 microns. Its shell is thin and smooth. Fully developed larvae are seen in the eggs. It is important to recognize artifacts during stool microscopy as they can be confused with ova and cyst of various protozoa and helminths. For example, yeast and fungal elements which are common in stool, pollen grains in stool can also be mistaken for helminth eggs, plant fiber or plant cell, 
air bubbles, etc. Chemical examination of stool includes stool pH and reducing substances. Stool pH depends upon the dietary intake and bacterial fermentation in the small intestine. Alkaline stools can be seen in cases of colitis, villus adenoma, diarrhea and antibiotic therapy. Acidic stools may be seen in cases of fat malabsorption, disaccharide deficiency and carbohydrate malabsorption. Reducing substances in stool are important in infants with chronic diarrhea to rule out lactose intolerance.